and then again to uh, stop. Okay. All right, so like we talked about, <clears throat> um, all this forested area is basically not being used for anything right now. Um, if we wanted to convert it into useful space and start developing it and bringing it into production and and all of that, then the, in my opinion, the cheapest and easiest way while still getting productivity out of it is to bring in animals to do that job for you. So sheep or goats are the best, in my opinion, especially for this kind of terrain. Um, either one would be good. If you're going with sheep, just the learning curve is a whole lot easier if you go with a hair sheep. So something like a Dorper or Katahdin, they shed their, their hair instead of you having to shear it. So that's one extra thing that you don't have to learn, that you don't have to figure out. It just makes it easy. And they both taste great. So um, they'll turn all this brush into meat. And um, if you don't want to go to that extent, it's you know too heartbreaking to kill the animals, then you just get rid of the male so you only have females and they can just live long, happy lives as pets. So you can always go that route. <clears throat> um, but keep in mind that if you, do, um, if you do breeding, then you could always just sell the weaned kids or lambs. So, I mean, that is, that would be a nice little income source if you have the market for um, the, the breeding stock or whatever. And, you, you know, you could always slant your uh, production away from meat into we breed breeding stock. So you could get really, really hone in on the excellent genetics and we imported this buck from this line of champion whatever and then we imported these does or ewes from this champion line or whatever and then you end up with you know high dollar kids that you could or babies that you can end up selling for more but it just all depends on how you want to how involved you want to get you know just raising some for meat and for clearing low level of involvement low level of um, effort because I mean, they you just you fence it, you train them in a small area. We're go, uh, we'll talk about how to train them to the electric fence and train them well, and then you can, if they're well trained to the electric fence, then you can use um, portable step-in posts or little pieces of rebar that you just take a little three-pound sledge and a little piece of rebar. Because the ground is rocky, you might have to, you know, feel around. Step and post probably won't be the best thing for this. Um, and then you can have, uh, there are uh, insulators that just slide over the rebar, and then they just tighten down. So you can change how high that electric goes. And then what you can do is you could, you know, put them in one area and get them to just completely take out all the brush in that one area. And then you go through with a machete or a pair of loppers or... Uh, handsaw, reciprocating saw, whatever, chainsaw, little battery operated chainsaws and stuff, make it real easy, real quick to go through and then you can take out all the big stuff that they can't walk down. You know, it might be 20 feet tall, but it's a, you know, a trash tree that you don't really care about. It's not going to be beautiful or productive and you can get rid of all those things and then do a new paddock get them working in there, and then in the old paddock that's all cleaned up now, you can go through and you can replace trees with more productive cultivars or more, more productive species. So you could replace a hackberry with a white oak. That's gonna take a lot longer to produce, but when it does, it's beautiful. Or if you're into uh, more of the woodworking stuff and uh, you wanna grow, let's say you wanted to grow some of your own um, tool handles. You could take hickory nuts and you could plant a little grove of hickories and grow them up for 
three, four years until they're tool handle size and then you harvest them. You could plant yourself a little 25 by 25 plot of rake and shovel handles, you know, in that old, that old paddock. And once they get grown up enough that the goats can't walk them down, then you can let the goats back in there and they'll keep all the brush and poison ivy and stuff like that cleaned up. And then, um, you know, like we talked about, you could for the ultimate and low, low effort, low time involvement, you get it perimeter fenced, you get them a little three-sided shed, you get some water run out there to them, whether that's plumbed up city water or you come off of this and you build yourself out a um, retaining wall, timber framed post or whatever pad to put a water tank and you can take all this runoff water and have it go to that water tank and then just gravity feed down from that with a float valve to a little tub for their water. So they always have a source of water. It's all water runoff. You're capturing that and utilizing it. And that could be something that is just always gonna get topped off whenever it rains. That tank gets topped off and it could be a thousand gallon tank right there. It could be an IBC tote. It could be an IBC tote as simple as that a $60 IBC tote with rainwater run to it and a bulkhead fitting to a garden hose to a float valve and a little tub. Water's taken care of. If you want to make it look pretty, take some of your, your pallet wood and stain it and sheath the outside with free pallet wood and it'd look nice, right? Um, but uh, we're talking about the, the location for your little uh, goat shed or sheep shed or whatever. I would try and locate it such that it is as high up in elevation as you can make it. Um, it's going to have to be either multi-level or small and narrow up here, but you might... I don't know what the, the geology is like underneath here. You might be able to cut this down a little bit and cut and fill to give yourself a little bit of a terrace for access. What I would prefer is access that's wide enough that you could um, bring something like a gas or battery powered go-kart, not go-kart, uh, golf cart down here. <clears throat> so being able to take a little, uh, they have dump bed gas powered and battery powered golf carts where you can back all the way down here, unload stuff. You know, I'm thinking if you hurt your back or something and I need to take a, a bale of hay from my, the bed of my pickup truck to there, I can buy the bale of hay, have someone load it up for me, and then once I get where I'm, get here, I can back that go kart, golf cart up to it and just slide it off. They even make those crank unloader things that are really handy and you could just crank it off so even if your back is injured or whatever <clears throat> or you're 65 years old and things aren't working right you can still do these kinds of chores and then you just get over there and you just slide it off into a hay feeder that's that you build to the level of that bed so it just shoo, slides off and your hay feeder the bottom of that hay feeder could even be something like aluminum or um, stainless steel <coughs> or galvanized flashing. So it slides really quick and easy. Low friction means shoo, it'll just slide right off. So think about those things when you're, when you're designing this out and building this out. Um, even the, the vertical uh, boards on uh, a manger and you've got two by fours coming up like this or whatever, you can put flashing on, on three sides or sheath the whole thing in flashing so that um, they're not gonna end up, you know, rubbing it down or chewing on it. But also if the, the base has flashing in it, then sliding the square bale of hay through there, it's gonna be real easy. The chance of you torquing and throwing something out is going to 
be reduced. And then again, if you have to have a neighbor or someone else come take care of your animals for you because you're on vacation or whatever, then the easier you can make that and the less likely you can make it that someone's going to get injured means it's just, it's that much more likely that the work will actually get done. So I like to always think about those little kinds of quality of life improvements that for an afternoon of work, I can make it so that I can just, I can stand in the bed of my truck, grab the strings on that square bell and I can just sling them and they just shoot down the hay manger and I can just fill it up and I can take a five